it delivers us and rescues us from our five senses that we were put in in the beginning. And that fifth sense down here, the five senses, man fell there with them senses by his appetite. Now, notice that these senses was given to you to only to contact your earthly home, that you might see, taste, feel, smell, and hear. But they're by no means to lead you. And now, many times, what if I refuse to look anymore? And I just bind up my eyes and say, I refuse to look. All right? My eyes can't serve me no more. Well, then I finally, I'll go blind. And then when my boy comes on, I tie his eyes up and say, no, sir, there's no such a thing as sight. I just tie his eyes up. Don't let him see. He said, my father told me there was no such a thing as sight, so I'll tie up my boy's eyes. Well, the first thing you know, our generation would be born blind. Right. If you don't use your six senses, they become dormant. They won't act at all. Brother, that's what the church has done to the sixth sense. God put him in. He's just placed faith off in miracles and signs and the things that contact God and gives him the Holy Ghost and things. He's placed that off over there or back over here somewhere till the thing has become dead. Right. He don't know how to use it. The thing's just nothing to him. You say, well, God's a healer. Oh, what about that? God's a healer. If he ever was a healer, he's still a healer. If he ever was a savior, he's still a savior. If he ever was God, he's still God. So you see, it's a lack of faith that's been preached into the people that makes them let that sixth sense, which is faith, lay dormant. And through the years... They'll run out, be sick, and run to the doctor and say, Doctor, oh, I got something wrong with me. Doctor, look at it, say, you'll try. The man, a good, honest doctor, will work just as patiently as he can with all the power that God will give him to operate and do things that he should do to help you. And then the first thing you know, it advances on. Well, he says, I just have to tell you, uh, there's nothing more uh, I can do. If you want to go to another doctor, go see him. Well, then you go to another doctor. And he say, no, nothing can be done. It's too far advanced. Now, that is the time. That's the time to call on the sixth sense. That's the time to accept God. That's the time to rely upon the spirit of faith that God has put in you. And now when it's been, people have been taught against it so long, it makes it hard. Brother Bose was telling me today, he said, Brother Bram, I never realized what you bucked against. See? You don't realize what it is. What a hard thing. When you bring and the power of God will come right down so real to the people. They can look and see the Spirit moving among the people and doing things. And some will sit there and say, Oh, if you just you do this or do this or do that or something or another, maybe it would help me. Oh, brother, if that sixth sense could understand what we've been preaching about this week. Amen. Amen. That the Holy Ghost, God made this promise. Christ made the promise. We puck it through the scriptures this week, back and forth and back and forth and combed it over until we know that God promised to do this thing He is doing now in this day. The supernatural. Now, real genuine faith would see that and catch a hold of it and all devils out of hell would never shake Him away from it. But we stumble at it. It's not used enough. We depend too much on the five, and when, most of the time, the 95% of the people are better. As soon as they see the five senses is finished, well, it's all gone. Dig my grave, get my casket ready. See? Oh, I was thinking of a little woman here I had on interviews a day or two ago. I don't see him here now. A man's name is uh, uh, kind of a jer- gosh, dash, or gosh. And his wife, she had a dream, and she come telling me the dream. And she said, Brother Branham, I, I dreamed that the devil come up side of my bed. And he looked over at me and began to make glean, funny uh, faces at me. And said, I got you now. And said, I just something happened to me. And I jumped up out of the bed and said, get out of here, devil, in the name of Jesus. 
and started running him, and he ran out of the house. And she said, I don't understand what that means. Then the Holy Spirit being present, give the interpretation. Just a little after that, her husband had a heart attack. And when she seen her husband fall, and he's an aged man, heavy man, and his hands went back and his eyes set, death come to take him. But God wasn't through with him. And that little woman's faith raised up and said, I won't stand for it. I call for his life in the name of Jesus Christ. He got well. See? Why? That sixth sense rose up in that crucial moment. That time to give her faith. God to give her the dream, though it had not been interpreted to her yet. And I said, there's your interpretation. And a little fellow just began screaming and praising God. She said, that's exactly the way it happened. See? That's, now, that goes into grace. See, give her the dream, not even knowing what it was, but God is thankful and loyal anyhow to keep his people posted. If we would only be spiritual and use that sixth sense, we owe how many things we could bypass. How many things we'd know if the church was in order, where the spirits and gifts of the church would be operating. We'd have Ananias or Fies laying all over everywhere. Right. Sin would be out of the church. But we become so earthbound with our senses. Just so, uh, well, if they can't see it, if I can't... And then, them senses, the devil gets into those senses. And he'll let you see something with your eyes and then disbelieve it anyhow. Because many times you've kept your eyes closed so long until you're blind. A fellow said to me one time, said, smite me blind, smite me blind. Do you believe in divine healing? The same Holy Ghost that Paul preached, smite me blind. I said, I can't do it because you're already blind. <laughs> I said, your father, the devil, did that a long time ago. See, you, 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 you're already blind. For the Bible said he's blind. This gospel is, is if it's hid to anybody, it's those that are blind, that hasn't tried to use their senses. The sense of God gave them. That sense, if it's used, it's a sense of deliverance. When the other five fail. By this sense, there's been great things done. Here some time ago in one of my meetings, there was a lady come across the platform. And she had a, a ulcered stomach bleeding. And the Holy Spirit began to speak, which she knowed I couldn't do that, and Told her who she was, where she come from. She had an ulcer stomach. Then when it got through, it said, Thus saith the Lord, you're healed. And she went home and there was a, a lady neighborhood was way on down the prayer line. When it comes, she had a growth on her throat. And when the prayer line got down to her, it said to her, said, told her who she was, where she come from, all about it. She said, that's all right. It said, Thus saith the Lord, you're healed. And so them two women went that night, got together. They didn't feel any different. That don't have anything to do with it. That doesn't have one thing to do with where you feel. You, you, don't, you get away from these feelings. If you're going to rely on them, you can't rely on that. Because it's the evidence of things you don't see, taste, feel, smell or hear. It's another sense. Watch what happened. About two weeks passed. This woman with the ulcered stomach, she tried to eat and she just liked to die. But she still maintained. She said, there's something supernatural about it. Because the man never seen me in his life, and yet he told me who it was. And it's got to be godly because it compares with the Bible. See? And she said, and I know that fellow I heard him preach, and he's uneducated. He knows nothing about these things, and told me all about it. And the same man said, thus saith the Lord. And if he's a servant of God, he couldn't say that. If he just thought it, it's the Holy Spirit talking through him. That you are healed. And she kept on. And her, her husband was a Christian, her children. And she said, and she goes see her little lady friend down the street from her. It had a knot, no difference. But both of them purposed in their heart that they had accepted that to be God. And that's all there was to it. One morning the children was gone to school and she's standing washing the dishes. And she just could hardly eat anything because the ulcer would just burn her up. She was washing the dishes, and she said, all at once, a real cool feeling come over. And she went on for, what was that? I just felt so funny, just real light and a cool feeling. Well, she just went on washing the dishes. In a few moments, she got real hungry. So she goes over at the, 
at the table, and the children had left some oatmeal in a dish. So she dipped up that oatmeal in a spoon, and she ate it, and a little bite of toast. She thought, well, as usual, I vomited up maybe in a few minutes. And so she uh, went on. The first thing you know, it was all right. Went on. She got all right. Then she went over and tasted again. It was all right. Then she really had a gastronomical jubilee. She goes over and fries her a couple of eggs, a big bunch of bacon, got her a cup of coffee, and she really eat. She went on washing the dishes around a little while. Then she got up on her feet. She felt fine. She raised up her hands and began to praise God, run down the street. She's going to tell her sister about what happened. When she got down there, this little lady was walking the floor, shaking the sheet just as hard as she could. Said, well, what's the matter, sister? Said, look, that thing's gone off my neck. I can't find it in the sheet. I can't find it anywhere at all. It was gone. What was it? Because they held on to that sixth sense of the word of God that wouldn't take no for an answer. They come to the meeting about two months after that. Both of them showed me the, how they were healed and everything. What was it? The sixth sense. That sixth sense, that sense of power, that thing that delivered them. Not because I prayed, but because that they believed. That's it. That done it. Now, there was up at the Cato Tabernacle, up in Indianapolis, or down from here it is, the Indianapolis. They had a, a boy that had, had polio, and they brought... After the Rediger girl was healed, Brother Rediger's girl was sitting out there in, a, in the coal shed, trying to hold her. She'd gone insane. How many ever remember B.E. Rediger, the pastor of the Fort Wayne Gospel Tabernacle? All talk about man believed in healing in the days of Brother Bosworth. Don't you remember him, Dr. Sullivan? And very fine man. And his daughter, sitting out there, had gone insane with the disease of the mind that had killed her sister. And she was a beautiful woman. It was on Easter morning. And her mother was sitting out there, and after she got through the prayer line, somebody said, there's a lady out here in the coal shed in the, at the church with her daughter. Said she's Mrs. B.E. Rediger from the Fort Wayne Gospel Tabernacle. I thought, what? B.E. Rediger's wife and daughter sitting in my coal shed? And I went out there, and there they sat on little old benches that had been thrown from the Sunday school in there with papers. Beautiful girl sitting there, about 18, 20 years old, pulling out her hair like this and saying, a nickel is a nickel, a penny is a penny. Nickel is a nickel, a penny saved, a penny, a penny made, a penny saved. A nickel lost, a nickel lost. Going on like that, pulling her hair, going on. I said, Mrs. Rediger. I said, Are you're Mrs. Rediger. She said, I am. And I said, I'm Brother Branham. She said, well, I'm glad to meet you, Brother Branham. I said, your husband was almost an idol in my heart when I was a little boy. Oh, what a great man. She started weeping. And I said, this is his daughter? I said, yes, Brother Branham. We've had her ever where nothing can be done. And her sister, Romaine, died. I said, did Romaine die with that? I said, I got your all pictures at home and everything. Your books on living waters and so forth that Brother Rediger wrote. I said, well, when I was a, even a boy, he was a great man. I used to listen to him on the radio. I said, this is his daughter? I said, that's his daughter. Something come up on me. Her daddy dead and buried. I walked over to that sixth sense begin to move. I said, Satan, you can't hold her any longer. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. So the mother said, I said, she said, what must I do? I said, she's healed, take her home. She's still sitting there. Nickel is a nickel, a penny made, a penny lost, and so forth like that. Going on. They took her home, and the next day she come to herself and is a married woman with a bunch of children now. What was it? Holding on to that sixth sense. Some time ago, if you wanted the confirmation of this testimony, what sixth sense will do? We was at, uh, I was with Brother G.H. Brown, 505 Victor Street at Little Rock, Arkansas. And there was one of the hardest cases I ever seen in my life. Brother Brown, after he was trying to take a little uh, recess from standing in the prayer line so long, he said, Brother Brown, down in the basement here in the auditorium is one of the hardest sights you've ever seen. said, that woman was healed of insanity from up in Mississippi. Her boy was a soldier. She'd been in there for 20 years, didn't even know her boy. And she came to her right mind while I was praying for her. That just set the thing afire. And then she said, look at this. And I went down there and a great heavy woman, young, with her feet sticking right up with just a little clothes on her where they put in the, on her in the institution because she never raised her feet, hadn't been on her feet in two years. Her limbs were bleeding, her arms was bleeding, and she was laying with both feet up and both hands up like that. And I said to the man, I said, 
Well, what's the matter? I said she lost her mind, Brother Branham. Uh, she took a shot, and something happened to her. I said right after our baby was born, and said it, it paralyzed something in her mind. I said she's been in the institution now for two years, and said I said what's she bleeding so about? I said well they wouldn't dismiss her from the institution, and said they wouldn't take an ambulance because she's she's real rational. And said, I hired a brother to take his Chevrolet car and got four more men. And we tried to hold her in that back seat, four men, and she kicked the windows out and things coming down here. About 90 miles from the institution where she was from. And I said, you mean she's bleeding like that? I said, well, I'll walk out and lay hands on her. I said, oh, don't you do that. I said, she'd kill you. Well, I was just young in the way and I've been in the ministry like this for about, oh, I guess it's something like a year. And I thought, God would take care of that. I walked on out on the floor, and she just had her hands up. I said, how do you do, sister? And it was a good thing that I was watching. That great big powerful arm possessed with the devil, they're ten times her power. And she gave a jerk like that so hard, she jerked me from off my feet. And when she did, my foot hit right across her, her bosom here and jerked my hand loose, and I run from her and run up on the step like that, and her husband standing there. And she come after me, crawling on her back like a serpent. Making good time, chasing me on her back with her hands and feet up. Just going, I can still hear that hideous noise, dragged like a snake, coming across the floor. She weighed about 170 pounds, and she's dragging like that. She come right up there, turned around, put her big, strong limbs against the wall like that, and kicked real hard, hit a, a bench sitting out there, and knocked the hide off her head. Part of her scalp peeled out. Blood began to run out like that. She took this stick that broke off from it and threw her at it. Her husband and knocked all the plastering off the wall. We had to duck her head. He said, I told you. I said, I never see anything like that in my life. He said, what is that, Brother Branham? I said, that's the devil. And just then she crawled right up and she said, William Branham, you have nothing to do with me. I brought her here. And her husband looked over and said, why, she don't even know who she is. How is she don't know you? I said, that's not her, that's the devil. That's that devil. Now I said, Satan, you realize and do know that I have no power over you, but my Lord does. For he triumphed over you at Calvary. And by a divine gift given to me by an angel, which told me to get the people to be sincere and nothing would stand before the prayer, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. No change. Her old husband, old overhauls on, threw his arm around my neck and began to hug me. And he said, what must I do with her, Brother Branham? I said, take her on back to the institution if they'll receive her. He said, well, what do you think? I said, it isn't what I think, it's what do you think? He said, I believe that she'll be well. I said, that's all you need to do. I believe she'll be well. On the road back that night, they never had one bit of trouble with her. The next morning when the, they come in to get her, she was sitting up and spoke to the matron. And the second day she was dismissed from the hospital perfectly normal and well. About six months after that, I was at Jonesboro, Arkansas with... Richard Reed at the Old Fashioned Revival Hour Tabernacle at, at Jonesboro, Arkansas. Used to be a big Baptist tabernacle. Se seats many more than this here, this place. And I was starting to preach, and I kept seeing somebody waving at me out there, and I didn't know who it was. And she just couldn't stand it no longer. She said, you remember me? Had four or five little children. I said, I don't believe I do. She said, I've never seen you before either. She said, but I was the woman that was on my back crawling. And her husband in that six months' time had been called to the ministry. And he was going out to preach the gospel. Oh, my. What is it? Holding on to that sixth sense. Faith said so. He said, I kept that in my heart. If God could do such a thing to others, he can do it for my wife. He kept holding on to that. Nothing would separate him from it. That's what that sixth sense will do when it's turned loose and let it have its controlling power. One night I come home. I was laying in my bed. If you want to write for these testimonies, I'm giving you addresses. You write to Georgie Carter, Milltown, Indiana, uh, and it'll, it'll go to her. Georgie Carter, Milltown, Indiana. And she belonged to a church that did not believe in divine healing. She was taking piano lessons when she was a little girl, and her uncle was taking her to this uh, to a piano uh, lesson. And when he did, this man, being a full-grown man, and her little girl, ravished the child. And when it did, it gave her TB. And she'd been laying nine years and eight months on the flat of her back with TB of the female glands all through her body and into her lungs. And she approximately weighed 37 pounds, I think, the, what they could weigh her. Now, you can just write her if you wish to. It's your privilege. She'll be glad to write back. 
And I know nothing of the girl, and I didn't even know where Milltown was. And I come in home, and I seen a mother, and I said, I'm going to bed early tonight because I want to go in and meditate on the Lord. She said, all right, Billy, just go on in and go to bed. I went in the room, and I was prayed and praying for a long time, and after a while, I looked over there, and Mama's just one of these old-fashioned country women. Wash her clothes and lay them in a chair. I don't know whether you women ever did that or not. And lay them there until she arms them, stands around barefooted and arm. And uh, so I, Mama had chairs sitting there and clothes in them. And all of us boys in, at home, and I was staying home then after I lost my wife a long time. And I looked and looked like that chair was coming toward me. And when I looked, it was that light coming towards me. And when it got right to me, I started like going through a wilderness. Now I could hear something like a little lamb going bad, bad. And I thought, oh, that poor little fellow's hooked up somewhere. And I started through the brush trying to find it. And when I got to a, up close to it, I could listen again. I said, where is it at? I thought, the poor little thing. And I started up close, closer, pulling through the brush. And when it was bang, it was going mill down, mill down. And I was working, trying to get to it, and I come out of the vision. I thought, where is Milltown? I thought, there's trouble at Milltown. Some lamb is caught down there, or up there, wherever it is. I went out and I asked my church Wednesday night, did they know any place named Milltown? Nobody knowed it. Well, then on Sunday, I asked again, anyone know a place named Milltown? George Wright. Many of my people here from the tabernacle know George Wright. Been coming there for years. He said, uh... Well, Brother Branham said Milltown is just a, down there on the southern, about 35 miles from here. A little city sets on a little hill down there. I said, I know where it's at. I said, well, you take me to it. He said, I will. Well, then I said, I'll be down the following Saturday. Well, I went to Milltown. We went down there. There's got about two groceries. And I've seen people come in their wagons and buggies like you do down in Kentucky, you know, down the hills. And I thought, well, I don't see nothing here. I went in and asked the man if I could buy that little wooden box from him. He said, yes, what do you want with it? I said, there's a lot of people standing out here. I want to make me a platform to stand on. I'm a preacher. I want to preach. He said, you don't owe me nothing for it. Take it out there. That's all right. And so I got my box. And when I got my box and went out, I seen Brother Wright coming down. He said, Brother Bram, I've got to do some trading up on the hill here. He said, if you want to, you can go up with me. I said, all right. I just set my box down here. Be a little bigger crowd time I get back. And I went up the hill and we passed by a big old white church. And I said, what kind of a church is that? He said, that's an old Baptist church. He said, the preacher got in some trouble and said he turned to be a gangster and ravished some man's wife and they shot him and a whole lot of stuff went on. He said, the Pete congregation is scattered and he said, they don't have church anymore. Well, I started to go on around the church with him and when I did, something said, go over to that church. And I went over there and I said, let me stand here until you go on up on the hill. He said, all right. I said, they're not having church here? No. I tried to open the door, and the door wouldn't come open. I said, Heavenly Father, is there something about this church you just called me? Is this church what's all wound up in the brush? Is this what you're hollering mill town? If this is where you want me, open that door for me. I took hold of the door. It wouldn't open. Well, I sat down on the step. And just about that time, some man come walking around the church. He said, how do you do? I said, how do you do, sir? He said, did you want in the church? And I said, uh, uh, yes, sir. He said, I got the key. He opened the door. I looked around in there. I said, who owns it? He said, the city. I said, why don't they going to have some meetings here? He said, go to Quarry. Ask them. And I went over there. He said, I said, I work for the public utilities. I'll put a meter in it. I'd like to have some services there. He said, help yourself. No rent at all. I said, just keep it up. And I said, thank you, sir. I'll do that. And I went over and put me in a meter. Started a revival. The first night there, I gave out, God is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. God remains God. And Brother Hall, a man wrote a little piece in there, or not Brother Hall, Brother Wright, wrote a little piece in there and said, come here a little Billy Sunday. Well, that night I had a great congregation. Mr. Wright, his two daughters, and his son. A church that will seat about 500. Well, I preached just as hard as I could. The next night, I had the same congregation. Right along about time I got ready to... Sitting up behind the pulpit in the chair, I was going to call the church, the service to order, pass out the song books, had them laying all around, and dusted it all out, worked hard all day and come in, dusted it out. I started down along this song books, these song books, give Brother Wright one, rest of them one, 
Went back and sat down. About that time I heard something going on the door. I looked and here come a fellow in. Brother Wright said, oh my. So there's the biggest hypocrite and infidel there is in the country. And he knocked his old corn cob pipe out on the side of the house. Walked in like that. One tooth out, his hair hanging down his eyes. Now where is that guy called Little Billy Sunday? <laughs> I walked back and I said, your name, sir? He said, I'm Bill Hall, the florist up here. I said, well, I'm Brother Branham. He said, are you the Little Billy Sunday? I said, that was mistaken. I said, no, I'm not a Little Billy Sunday. I said, won't you come up here in front and sit down? He said, I'll be satisfied right back here. I said, all right, make yourself at home. Here's a songbook. So I don't know how to sing. I said, well, neither do we, but we'll make a joyful noise to the Lord. I went on up, preached. As I started preaching, he kept moving a little bit farther up, a little farther up. And when I gave the altar call, he was on the altar and become the pastor of that church to yet. Now, a couple days after that, I began to preach on divine healing. They told me about a girl that lived over the hill that had been in a bed nine years and six uh, and eight months without even seeing the outdoors. Well, uh, I said, well, I don't know if, if their pastor had done give out in a certain denomination of church that said the days of miracles is past. Most all the churches around there said, if anybody even goes up there, you're excommunicated to begin with. So her father was a deacon in that church. So it was hard for them to come up there. And my little book, many of you might have read it, called Jesus Christ the Same Yesterday and Forever. Well, that, the little nail girl's testimony is in there where she had been healed. Well, they sent me to come up and pray for a girl that had TB. And her parents wanted me to come. I went up and prayed for her. She came back with me to church that night. Been laying there for a long time. Georgie got a hold of this and she just started weeping out. Finally, her mother and father consented that I could come pray for her, but they wouldn't even be in the house. They went away and went away. So I went in, poor little thing. She'd try to cough. She'd go, <laughs> she couldn't hold her sputum and cut the spit in. And she said, I read the little book. Now look, there was my picture and that little book called Jesus the same yesterday and forever. And she said, I believe He'll heal me. And I said, well, I don't want to cause a friction in your church, girly, but where's your father and mother? Tears. Where's she got enough marsh to get tears? I don't know. Run down her face where you can even see where her skull was laced together. She belonged to a very famous church that denies the power of God. Don't, it's a modern Pharisee. They don't believe in no Holy Spirit, no nothing. Just be baptized in water and belong to the church. And so I didn't want to cause any hard feelings amongst the people. And I said, well, now, I'll pray for you. And she said, will you do like you did for the nail girl? I said, sister, that was a vision. I can only do as God says do. And I prayed for her. She didn't get any better. I finished up my revival, and I had about 60 or 75 to baptize at the end of that week. And she promised God if she could be healed, she'd go be baptized up in a place called Totten Ford in the little Blue River there. Well, they, when the day come to be baptized... I walked out there and there'd been a preacher, he had ridiculed me on water baptism, oh my, my. And he'd had a revival in a tent just on top of the hill. And while I was out there in the water baptizing, I said, it just seems to me that the angels of God are sitting along. And every one of his congregation, that muddy water with pretty white dresses on, walked out there and was baptizing Christian baptism. Every one of them. That's right. All oh, out of time. We started up to Mr. Wright's to eat supper. And when I did, I said, I don't feel like eating supper before I go back to the meeting tonight. I believe I'll go up and pray. I have a burden on my heart for that little girl. And I went up there and in the hillside and started praying. About a few weeks ago, I was down there, the same little bush. I was knelt down there praying, looking up to God. I try to be quiet and there'd be green bars around my legs, scratching me. You, you start to pray or do something right and watch how the devil gets a hold of you. And um, I went back over here and the sunshine setting was shining my eyes. I went back on this side everywhere you was and finally I just give up and I said, Lord, God, let up the sticks hurt my knees or rocks hurt my knees or whatever more. I'm praying. And I started praying. Just by the time I got into praying real good, I looked and out of a little dogwood bush. Anybody know what a dogwood is? Oh, sure. Well, I don't know what dogwoods are. And a little dogwood bush there, that light, that angel of God whose picture you got here. That light was shining down out of that bush. said, rise to your feet. I said, yes, my Lord. said, go by the way of Carter's. <laughs> That's all he said. Well, when I, I heard that bell ringing, and Mr. Wright told me, he said, now when that bell rings, Mama's got supper on the table, and you come on. An old country bell said, you ring it. 
She, when she's ringing it, you come on. I heard it, but I was in the vision, and I couldn't go. You know, God answers on both ends of the line. Don't you believe that? The same time, little Georgie was so nervous, knowing I was going to leave the country. She was crying, and she wanted to come and be baptized, and she'd promised God, and she got real restless. And her mother, wonderful woman, and she went out in the kitchen and knelt down and shut the door between her and Georgie. And she said, Oh, God of heaven. She said, Do something to that low-down imposter that's come through our country here. And the nine years that my poor little girl's laid on that bed, she's never complained one time. And now he's got her all scrupled up in her mind, telling her about a healer or something or another. And said, Rebuke that man. Rebuke that man, Lord. She was honest about it. She said, run him out of the country. My poor little girl laying in there dying with not a hope that she can live any longer. And there, laying in there like that, and that imposter getting her all worked up under a false hope. She said, now this is her testimony. I wasn't there. She said she raised up. She thought she heard someone coming. She raised up. Her daughter lived up the hill a little ways. And she thought it was her daughter. She looked back. She looked and said on the wall where the sun was going down at the same time I was praying, she seen a shadow coming down the wall. It was Jesus, she said. Said there he's just as pretty as you ever seen with his beard. He said, Why are you weeping? Who's this coming? Said she looked over here and she seen a shadow of me, kind of partly bald headed, packing this here same Bible over my heart, coming walking in with a man following me. And she ran in, she said, Georgie, the funniest thing happened. She said, I must have went to sleep, I dreamed a dream. I saw that preacher coming about that time. The door slammed on the car. I was getting out on the outside. Oh, God answers on both ends if you'll just let him do it. There was Georgie there believing against all the unbelief. She's still holding on that God would make her well. If he could heal one girl, he could heal another. Yes. And she seen me and I walked up. Under the anointing, I never even knocked at the door, just opened the door. Her father was gone up to his barn to get some milk that had just got through milking. And so I walked up, opened the door, walked in there, I, and this woman, the mother, just fainted and fell over the floor. And Georgie was there, and she looked over at me, and I said, Sister Georgie, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom you love, and there behind the bed, the little poster bed, she'd rubbed all the paint off of it as long as she'd get her hands back that way, holding to that and crying to God for relief. And her church telling her the days of miracles has passed. She was born to be a child of God. And there, she was holding on to that promise. God, by His mercy, showed a vision and sent me down there. There's where it was. I said, I know who you are now. You're that lamb that I saw caught up in this bunch of theology down here. Amen. Hallelujah! I said, Georgie, the Lord Jesus, who you love and serve, appeared to me up here on a hill a while ago, and that same light that hung over the nail girl, and he told me to come by this way. I command the devil in the name of Jesus Christ to leave you. I said, rise up on your feet. Satan said, how's she going to rise up? Her legs no bigger than a broomstick, Harley. That wasn't a thought. Come up anyhow. And she couldn't even raise her sputum cup. And she rose up from that bed under the power of the Holy Ghost, walked across that floor praising God, went out and sat down in the yard and blessed the grass and the leaves and things she hadn't seen him for nine years. I turned around, walked on away. Her mother raised him again, screaming and falling and fell across the portion out into the yard. Neighbors began coming, thinking the girl had died or something. And here she was in the yard, walking around, patting the leaves and blessing God. Her father heard all the noise, so he come down. That old lady's wife out and the people fanned her like that, and he heard the organ playing. And he walked into the house. There was his little daughter sitting at the organ playing. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from him. And when sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. Oh, my. She hasn't been in bed no more than to go to sleep and since that time. That's been 15, 16 years ago. Oh, what was it? Holding on to that sixth sense. Something on the inside saying if he can heal one, he can heal me. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That's right. Remember up here at Fort Wayne, old John Ryan. Not the man with the whiskers, the other blind John Ryan. I was having a meeting up there in a big tabernacle. I'm fixing to close. Go to praying for the sick. This man was sitting up in a balcony. He is Catholic. They brought him along the altar. Brought him up on the platform by his card. When he come up, where was that? said, your name is John Ryan. That's right. And you're Catholic by faith. He said, that's right. You used to ride in a circus. That's right. said, and you've been blind now for 20-something years or better. He said, that's right. 
and some kind of leukemia or something that got into his eyes and running blind. I said, you're a beggar. Uh, and he said, not exactly a beggar, but said, I sat on the street. And I said, well, that's all right. I said, do you uh, believe that Jesus Christ will make you well? He said, I do. I prayed for him, laid hands on him. I said, Lord Jesus, I rebuke this blindness now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it leave him. I turned around and looked. I seen him walking away with his sight. I said, thus saith the Lord. You watch for that. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. You've received your sight. Well, he, he said, I can't see. I said, that has nothing to do with it. Go on on your road, rejoicing. So he went down. There's a woman in a few minutes had a great garter hanging on her throat while we was praying for her. It went away. Here come John Ryan back, pushing through all the ushers and coming back again. And so the man was helping me in the prayer line. He started to put him off the platform. He said, I want to see that preacher. And so they brought him up there again. He said, he said to me, he said, you told me I was healed. I said, you are. He said, well, if I was healed, I could see. He said, I said, oh, no, that has nothing to do with it. You told me, he said, well, you said I was healed. I said, you said you believed me. He said, I do believe you. I said, then what are you doubting about? He said, well, if I was healed, couldn't I see? I said, you will see. When God showed me a vision that you were seeing, it has to happen. He's Catholic. He's never been taught anything like that. He said, well, I don't understand it. What shall I do? I said, well, the only thing to do is go on your road just praising God for giving your eyesight. He said, where are you? He started pushing on. I said, wait a minute. He said, what is your name? And I said, Branham. He said, let me feel you. Now, he put my hands on He said, Mr. Branham. As a Catholic, I'm taught to believe my priest. And he said, I've come to you for help. And you told me who I was and all about my conditions, what nobody knows but God. I believe it to be the truth. I'll keep on saying praise God. Amen. Off the platform he went. Well, I couldn't hardly have the service the next two nights. He'd get up everywhere and I'd say, praise the Lord for healing me. <laughs> I'd start preaching, he'd raise up over an hour, praise the Lord for healing me. They give him a job selling papers. Nearly a month was gone. Hollering, praise the Lord for healing me. And he's down there and he hollered, extra, praise the Lord for healing me. <laughs> they laughed at him. They made fun of him. Little newsboys hissed at him. People on the street said, that old man's lost his mind. And he said, extra, extra, read all about it. Praise the Lord for healing me. Extra, read all about it. Praise the Lord for healing me. All right. They tuck him and they thought they were going to send him to the insane institution. And they questioned him. He said, I'm just as normal in my mind as I ever was, but I believe God. Praise the Lord for healing me. All like that. That wasn't his holding on to that sick sense of the enemy. Holding that. He wasn't paying attention where he could see that sight had nothing to do with it. He was seeing with another sight. He's seeing God. We look at things we don't see. All the Christian armor is by faith. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. All the fruits of the Spirit, everything is faith, unseen. We look at the unseen. We look at the unseen by faith. We see it. Hallelujah. A little boy led him across the street to get a shave in a barber shop. And some little smart aleck barber wanted to make some fun out of him. So he lathered up his face right good and some other barbers and winked his eyes at him like that. He said, uh, got shaved and got about half side down. Had a towel laying up there, you know, and he said, Say, Papa Ryan. He said, yes, son. He said, I heard you going to see the Holy Lord when he was up here. Yeah, I did, he said. He said, um, I heard that uh, you got healed. He said, yes, I did. Praise the Lord for healing me. And when he did that, his eyes come open in the barber chair. Out of that chair, he jumped with a towel around his neck. The barber went out the door with a razor in his hand. Down the street went old man Ryan just as hard as he could go, screaming and shouting, praise the Lord, he has healed me. Holding on. That's sixth sense. That's something that makes it real. Yes, sir. Through this sixth sense has subdued kingdoms. Amen. The sixth sense subdued kingdoms. Through that sixth sense, the walls of Jericho fell flat to the ground. Amen. You believe that? The walls of Jericho hit the ground through the sixth sense. Through the sixth sense, the sea could not drown Paul. Amen. When he went down there with all hopes is gone, he saw a vision of the angel of the Lord. He come back up saying, be of a good courage. 
What was the matter? No moon and stars for 14 days and nights. It's just as black as it ever was. The storm was just as great as it ever was. But that sixth sense went to work when he seen the angel of the Lord. Hallelujah. That sixth sense could not keep Peter in jail. No, sir. The power of God sent an angel in there and delivered him. The sixth sense could not keep Paul and Silas in stocks. God sent it as quick and shut the whole thing down. That's six cents. Let it go to work for you sometime. Because of that six cents, the lions couldn't even eat Daniel. <laughs> they couldn't fool that six cents. No, sir. But that six cents of fire couldn't burn the Hebrew children up. But that same six cents that was working in little Martha, when she come to see Jesus, raise her brother out of the grave after being dead for four days. That same six cents cleaned the leper. That same six cents raised up Jesus Christ on the third day. That same six cents will rapture the church one of these days and take it out of here to glory. Don't rely on the five. They're deceitful, but that six one's right. If you want, there's a little fellow here tonight. I don't know whether Charlie Cox is here or not. I was talking to him on the six cents. He tucked that and believed it and played it on the table. That's why I said, let me play it. Running out of the room and she and she said, Lord, I've got a sixth sense too and I'm going to punch the word. I want the Holy Ghost and here it comes. What is it? If you believe it, Amen. seeing, we should believe without any seeing, but yet God lets us see it anyhow. He shows it to us. He shows us His, His presence. Surely then, there'd be no excuse that that sixth sense won't go to work. Let us bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, the sixth sense, these testimonies from the Bible, that the sixth sense, as I call it, faith. I was reading in Hebrews 11 of the sixth sense, faith being the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that senses of the earth don't declare. And we see through there how they subdued kingdoms and stopped the mouth of lions, escaped the edge of the sword, and, and Enoch was translated into heaven for that sixth sense. Abraham sojourned in a strange land and received a son after he was a hundred years old. Six cents. When Sarah's womb was dead, he considered not those things. He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving pa- glory to God. He knew God made the promise and God, he was fully persuaded, would keep what he had promised. Oh God, and we're supposed to be the children of Abraham. What a poor excuse we are. Oh God, wake up the sixth sense in this church amongst these people tonight. When we see that you gave that great sign to Abraham, there, what taken place? God, I pray that they'll see the angel of the Lord's presence tonight and will rely not upon their feeling, upon their sight, but upon the word of God that made the promise. And every person in here will be healed and everyone is unsaved will be saved and all without the Holy Ghost will receive it. Hear me, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to receive your healing? All of you? You know, you go to put your sixth sense to work. What is the sixth sense now? It's faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things that makes Missouri wrong. I'm from Missouri. You have to show me, you know. Got to see it. Faith is that thing that subdues kingdoms, that brought righteousness, that does all kinds of miracles and signs of that sixth sense. Wake it up. Take the bandage off your spiritual eyes. Look around and see if you can see that God still remains God. All right. All of us got prayer cards. Line up over here to my right according to your number. Prayer card one, two, three, four. Stand up. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just come right this way now to this side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's fine. Bring the, your... Uh, throw the people and get around. That's fine. Drop them right down in here, if you will. All right. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. A religious group of people, a selected people, that all their generation, Jews, that have been taught of the coming Messiah and what he would do when he come, and when he come, they fail to recognize him. That's a pitiful thing, isn't it? I think that's one of the most saddest stories. 
In the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Come to his own, his own received him not. That's certainly a sad thought. Now, notice, they were looking for a Messiah. Is that right? And the Messiah, when he come, was to be a God prophet. How many knows that? He was to do the sign of a prophet. Because Moses said he would be a prophet. When he was manifested in the flesh, he would be a prophet. Do the sign of a prophet. It's just like the Jews now. I'm waiting. Brother Joseph and I was talking this afternoon. Brother Stockholm, Sweden. Brother Louis Petrus sent out about half a million Bibles. Well, Brother Argebright showed me that picture three minutes to midnight. Those Jews coming in from all over the world and down in Iran so forth. They never heard of the name of Jesus. Been down there since the Roman captivity. They never heard of such a thing as Jesus Christ. And Brother Petrus sent them down these Bibles. They were reading it. And so they had an interview with him. Right on, I got the picture myself. And they was looking at him. And they said, uh, what are you coming to the homeland for? To die? Packing the old off on their back and things? Said, we've come to see the Messiah. Yes, sir. When the fig tree begins to put forth its buds. Summer's nine. That six-point star of David is now a nation. The oldest flag in the world flies again for the first time for 2,500 years. That's right. Jerusalem has its own money, its own currency, its own laws, its own government. It's a nation again. Jesus said when that fig tree begins to put forth its buds, the time is even at the door. When they found this, these Bibles, they wasn't like a lot of our Wall Street Jews. They was down there believing. When they come to get them on the airplane, well, they wouldn't even get on that plane. They was afraid of it. Never seen anything. The TWA. You've seen the Look magazine. The old rabbi come out there and said, Remember, when we were called to come to our homeland... The prophet told us that we'd be carried back on the wings of an eagle. Hallelujah! Listen. Be carried back on the wings of an eagle. And there they was in the homeland. There they was. Coming back again. They took this little Bible and they began to read it. The New Testament. The Jew reads from the back to the front, you know. And when they got through reading it, they said, If this Jesus be the Messiah, show you where they are in this day. If this Jesus be the Messiah, then he'll be a prophet. If he's raised from the dead, let us see him do the sign of a prophet and we'll believe him. Amen. Amen. Oh, my. Just right. You Gentiles better get on your face. The hour's at hand when God will turn his grace to the Jews and you Gentiles will be sealed without God, without mercy. Nothing but atomic fodder. So get right with God now while you've got a chance to get right with God. You get right with God now. Notice, when Jesus come to the Jews, he did that Messiah sign, showed them that he was the prophet, and they called him a fortune teller. Beelzebub, a devil. And then it, there were some more people looking for a Messiah. How many knows there's only three generations of people in the earth? According to the Bible, Ham, Sham, and Japheth's people. They all come the sons of Noah. That's right. All right. That's Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan, which is half Jew and Gentile. And these Samaritans was looking for a Messiah to come. Jesus went up to the gate, sat down there, and a woman came out. And he said, bring me a drink. She said, it's not customary for you Jews. We have no such uh, dealings with one another. He said, but if you know who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. The conversation went on to finally said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, you said well, for you've had five. And the one you're now living with is not your husband. She said, Sir, that prostitute know more about God than two-thirds of the preachers in the United States. Yes. That's right. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We, we Samaritans, we know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll do them signs. He'll tell us all things. But who are you? Jesus said, I'm he that speaks to you. And she ran into the city and said, Come see a man who's told me the things that I have done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Did you get it? Isn't this the very Messiah? All right. Now, he did that sign before the Jew. He did it before the Samaritan, but not the Gentiles. We were Anglo-Saxon, had a club on our back, and we was worshiping idols. Romans and so forth. He never did that sign to them. And he said... That, that a wicked and adulterous generation in these last days would get that sign of Jonah, the resurrection sign. Now, and Jesus also told him, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. What kind of a sign did Sodom get? The same thing. The angel with his back turned. 
Are they all your people there, Billy? Everybody? All right. He said, um, how many here now that does not have a prayer card and you want God to heal you? Raise up your hand. Say, I, I want God to heal me. Now, if he's any more prayer cards, it's got a card. Get in the line. Now, if not, why well, you, we're going to catch you anyhow. Uh, you don't, you're not, I want you to find, if you can only take what I said tonight, that's six cents. Believe. With all your heart. Now, many of you send these handkerchief up. I'm praying over them, every one. Trying my best to get to them. Now, if I miss you, just write me at Jeffersonville, Indiana. I'll send you one. See, I'll send it to you through the mail. If you miss it or miss your handkerchief, some way gets lost. Just write me. It don't cost you a penny. Just write me. Of course, sometimes some people send a little money along because we spend hundreds of dollars a week on stamps and things to send us uh, handkerchiefs around the world with all kinds of miracles and things of signs returning back from them because it reaches more than I can reach. But now look, I suppose that 95% of the people, I know I've got some people here from Jeffersonville, but I don't see any of them in a prayer line. And if they was, I would ask them nicely to get out. That's right, because I can see them down home. This is for people that's up here. People that can't get in any other time. Now, here stands a lady. If I could heal that woman, I would be a, 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 a rascal if I didn't do it. If I could do it. I wouldn't be fit to stand behind this pulpit, Brother Sullivan, if I could heal her. But I can't heal her. She's already healed. If she's sick, I don't know if she's sick. But if she is... Jesus healed her when he died at Calvary. He made a propitiation for that. He was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes, we were healed. Is that right? Now, these people that they pushed up here in the wheelchairs, I want you to look. I believe last night a woman on a wheelchair caught her something or the Holy Spirit called her, taking her off that. Now, many times you in the wheelchairs, you begin to say, oh, my case is hopeless. As long as you believe that, your sixth sense is dead. <laughs> Your sixth sense, if it's alive tonight, this is the last hour of your suffering. You're coming out of there. Go home. Be well. The man and woman standing here, the colored brother and sister, their little boy. Do you believe tonight? You have faith, my brother. You have faith, sister. The little fellow's too little to know what faith is. You believe that God will heal your child. The lady standing here, this little boy here. You have faith. All of you standing around these wheelchairs, I want you to have faith for those people. And you out there, some of you with heart trouble. Go to die in a few days. Cancer. If something isn't done, you're going to die. These people may live an ordinary lifetime here, crippled. But if you don't get a hold of God right away, you're going to die. Yes, sir. But you get a hold of God and say, God, I'm using my sixth sense. I believe. And I believe that you're going to make me well. And then God will do that. Don't you believe that? I believe with all my heart. Now, I'm not going to use the line of discernment. I couldn't get that 50 through here. I couldn't do it. But I'm going to pray. Now, if God still remains God, if God is still God, then He can do all things just the way He... What is the highest form of, of faith? There was a Roman one, a Jew said, Come lay your hands on my daughter, she'll get well. The Roman said, I'm not worthy, just say the word. That's what the Gentiles are supposed to do. And meetings across the sea in different places. They can see one supernatural thing take place. The whole audience will just walk out by faith. See? They'll believe it. But here it's so hard. Now, you're a Pentecostal people. You may be Methodist, but if you've got the Holy Ghost, you're Pentecost. Now, if you've got that sixth sense ready to be made alive, let's make it. Now, this woman here, for this one, anyhow, I... I don't know the woman. I guess we're strangers to one another. Now here. Here's a woman. I've never seen her in my life. She said she don't know me and I don't know her. Well, how would I know? And she just reached down, mixed up these cards and gave somebody a card and she picked it up and here she is. She happens to be the first one on the platform. And if some of you all at the same time I'm talking to her, you believe out there and see if you don't go out there and get you too, just the same. Now, if that can be done once... To a person maybe never been in the meeting. That's a confirmation that it's truth. God told Moses, take this gift and go down there and show how your hands heal with leprosy. He did it one time and all Israel followed him to the promised land. See? He didn't every time he meet the Israelites, look here at my hand. Leprosy. See? It's healed. No, no. He did it one time they all believed it. 
And that's the way we're supposed to do it. See it, believe it. Now, here is my hands. As far as I know, I've never seen this woman in my life. If I did, I didn't know her. She's a total stranger. But if the Holy Spirit can come to me and tell me what she's standing here for, or uh, something that she's done, or something she's planning on doing, or maybe something that she knows that I know nothing about, that would be a confirmation that he's still the same Jesus that talked to the woman at the well. That would be proving to this Gentile generation that that Messiah, who once lived in a pillar of fire in the fatherhood, dwelled in a human body called the Son in the Sonship, and now in the Holy Ghost in you and I through the sanctification through the blood, dwelling in our bodies. The Holy Ghost dwelling in us. He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. You believe that? Now, I want to ask you in the wheelchairs. Now, if I could heal this woman, I would do it. If I could heal you, I'd do it. I can. But if the Lord God, then she's close to me, if the Lord God will tell me something about that woman, let her be the judge whether it's right or not, that she knows that I don't know, you know that it has to take some kind of supernatural power here to do it. Is that right? Well, you believe it to be the Son of God according to His promise that He promised He would do it? Well, you believe it all along here? Accept your healing then and believe it with all your heart. This one case would settle it if you'd really mean that. Amen. That's exactly the truth. If you would believe that one thing, it would certainly be the truth. All right, then. I, I'm just going to stand here with this microphone because when visions come, I don't know how I'm, low I'm talking or how loud I'm talking, but I've got this audience here promising that they will receive their healing if the Holy Spirit will reveal to me something about you that I, you know that I don't know. Now, that'll be, would, you, would it encourage you and make you have faith if you did that too? But it, it sure would. Now, now, I just talking to you just like our Lord talked to the woman at the well. See, he caught her first because she is the first one. See, that's what I have to do too to get, see, you're our human being. You have a spirit. You have a soul. I'm a human being. I have a spirit and a soul. I know now that you're a Christian because as your spirit begins to witness to me that you are a Christian. That's right. This feels welcome. If you was, it'd be pushing away. And was you ever in one of the meetings and see these things done? You've seen them done. You ever notice when sinners come and things, see how it pushes away from them like that? You know, just right now, it'll tell them, you're a sinner, you do so and so, you do such and such. See? Now, if you believe with all your heart, all that's in you, God will be able to tell me what your trouble is or something about it. Then you're going to receive it. And then that'll make all of them believe. These crippled people said they'd believe. The sick people, the heart trouble and things said they'd believe. So then everybody believe and the whole line would believe down there. We know you spring the prayer line through. Everybody really want to use that sixth sense and just go on and say, thank the Lord. He heals me. That's his attitude towards every one of them. You just have to be one who's drawn up here. There's many, many more all out through there. Probably the Holy Spirit might after a while go over the whole audience. I don't know what he'll do. Then when I get real weak, my son or some of them there, Gene or some of them, they'll come touch me on the side. I know it's, I got to quit then, see, because I don't, you don't know where you're at sometimes. After so many visions, it looks like everything's a vision, man, see. Jesus said, more than this shall you do, for I go to my Father, the things he'd seen. Now, I see what's the matter with the woman. She's come here for prayer, and the prayer is for a little growth. And the growth is on the arm. That's right, isn't it? Now, do you believe? Now, the growth is hid from me, but not from God. I tell you what arm it's on? The right. That's, is that right? Raise up your hand if that's true. Now, do you believe with all your heart? Now, does that sixth sense do something to you? Or are you just blinded over and say, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> or does that sixth sense really go to work? Say, praise God. I know that that man don't know that woman. Now, only Jesus Christ would know her, and he promised he'd do that. <clears throat> that means that you're going to be well then, if you can believe it. You say, maybe you guess what you had. I couldn't guess that. <laughs> no guessing to that. Perhaps, I'll tell you another thing. You're not from here. You're from Lima. That's right. You believe God can tell me who you are? Miss White. Mrs. White. That's true. God will heal you now. Go home and believe it with all your heart. Now, do you believe? Every one of you? Have faith in God. If you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. If thou canst believe, 
Now, what if I told you you was healed sitting in a chair? Would you believe me? It's going on your own then, because you what? Have faith in God. Now, what if I put my hands on you and said, Satan, get away from this boy. Would you believe it? Would you get well? Come here. Satan, leave this boy in Jesus' name. Amen. Go believe him. Have faith. What if I laid hands on you and said, Satan, depart from him. Would you believe it? Satan, depart from him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go believe it. If I told you what was wrong with you, would it help you or would you rather I just lay hands on you? Which would? Did he tell you what's wrong with you? It's in your back. That's right. Is that right? Then go home. Did he? In Jesus' name. All right. You believe if I just say something to you, lay hands on you, it would make you well? Come here then. In the name of Jesus, may she be healed. Amen. Believe. All right. What about you? I believe I know you. That's right. I'll just lay hands on you and say, Satan, leave my brother in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Believe now, brother. Go with all your heart. You believe all of you? Yeah. Well, listen. Here's what I can't get. See? Why is it when the Holy Spirit will come and reveal those things, He's telling me what everything's wrong with them people. If I'd stop a minute, but them others wouldn't get in the line. Is it just as great to see the Lord when people pass by to have enough faith to be healed, lay hands on them, as it would be to, to have a discernment? Have you seen it done? Have we become so Americanized that we have to be entertained by the Holy Ghost? Here, come here. I don't know you, but we're strangers to one another. Is that right? You know me, but I don't know you. But God knows us both. If God will tell me what your trouble is, will you believe me as be his prophet? With all your heart. All right? Heart trouble. That's exactly right. You believe now with all your heart? You believe you'll get well? You've come a long ways for this, haven't you? All the way from California. That's right. You bring your wife along too? She wants healing too. Didn't get a card, but she's got something wrong with her hip. It was caused from a fall. Isn't that right? Go home, you're going to get well, both of you. Go believe. Now, now that's just the same as... See him? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. You believe, sister? Just lay hands on you, believe you get well? Come then. In the name of the Lord Jesus, heal them. All right. Come, lady. I see. I, why? That woman is healed just as much as the other man. Why can't we say praise the Lord for healing that woman? See? Here. Uh, you know I know what's wrong with you. You know that just as well as I know it. You know that uh, God could tell me. Now, if I tell you, would it help you? It's your nerves that give away. That's exactly right. Believe with all your heart. Go a bit well in the name of Jesus Christ. Have faith. You believe, sister, with all your heart? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed. You believe with all your heart, sister? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed. Have faith. Come, sister. You believe with all your heart? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed. Now, that's exactly the way God said do it. Isn't that right? These signs shall follow them and believe. In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed. Amen. You believe for yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the devil leave the child. Amen. Go oh, now. Be healed. You want to eat your supper? Get over the stomach trouble? Go eat your supper and get well in Jesus' name. You believe with all your heart? See, keep on the, get that six cents, move that old five out of the way. Believe. How do you do? If I told you yes or no, you believe anyhow, huh? You believe it anyhow. All right, that little cyst on your spine, which is located between your shoulders, go believing and get well. You believe? <laughs> Have faith. Come, brother, you believe? In the name of Jesus, may he be healed. Come. You believe, brother? In the name of Jesus Christ, I'll lay my hands on you. You'll get well. Amen. Believe now. You believe, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Amen. Jesus does it for you if you believe it. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. That's the way, brother. That's it. That's the way. In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be made well. Amen. Come, sister. If the anointing of the Holy Spirit sure to do miracles like that, surely you'd be by the anointed by him, wouldn't you? And in the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed. Amen. You believe, brother? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Is this the next patient? Right. You believe, sister, with all your heart? That's it. Amen. She really got it. 
I just watched she had a shadow over and went, well, I wonder what happened to it. Turned around, now it's gone because she believed it. See? Amen. That's it. Amen. I don't know you. You don't know me. We're strangers one another. But God knows you, and He knows I'm here to help you if I can. You believe that? Just a minute, something happened in the audience. Somewhere, somewhere. That's it. Start believing out there. Well, your trouble's in your back. That's right, you got back trouble. Miss Finhofer, go home and be well. <laughs> Come believe me with all your heart. Do you believe, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be made well. Come. Now, if I told you what was wrong or didn't tell you or whatever more, would you believe anyhow? Then your female tr- female trouble's done left. You go ahead. Now. All right. You believe that God's going to heal your nervousness? All right, go on and be well in the name of Jesus. Believe with all your heart. You want to get over the stomach trouble? All right, go eat your supper and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. You believe with all your heart? All right, you believe in the name of Jesus Christ, go and be made well. All right, believe in this little boy and get over this trouble? I curse the devil that done this to this child. May be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Take you now, don't doubt. Watch what happens to him if you can believe. You believe with all your heart? In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. There's a healing keeps coming from over here. It's a little woman sitting back there with a brown hat on, kind of thin. She's suffering with TB. All right, sister. I don't know you and you don't know... Yes, you ought to know me. You were here once in my meeting. I see it as a Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hallelujah. That's it. You believe God can tell me what's wrong, what's wrong with you there? You have a tumor and God heals you of it. That's it. Hallelujah. I challenge you to believe. There's so many believing. Have faith in God. You believe, sister? In Jesus' name, go and be made well for the glory of God. You believe, brother? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be made well. You believe, brother? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be made well. You believe, sister? In the name of Jesus, go and be made well. You believe, brother? In Jesus' name, go and be made well. You believe for the little baby? Now look, I know it's a birth condition, but that don't have nothing to do with what the devil done any time. God can take it away. You believe that? I curse the devil that did this to this child. In the name of Jesus Christ, may this baby be well. Amen. You believe, sister? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be made well. You believe, sister? In Jesus Christ's name, go and be made well. You believe, sister? In Jesus' name, go and be made well. You believe, sister? Is that the last of prayer line? All right, look here at me just a minute. You believe with all your heart. Amen. If God can tell me what your trouble is, you believe it? One thing, it's your eye. Going bad. Right? That's not the main thing. Got a tumor. The tumor's in the stomach. You're not from here. Go on back to Illinois and get well. Jesus Christ, take you well. If you can believe, all things are possible. You believe that? That man sitting out back there. He's got that little baby. He's got a hole in his heart. You're from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Mr. Kirkline, go home and breathe. That baby's heart will heal up. That's the power of our God. Have faith in God. Another woman sitting there from Memphis, Tennessee, up this way, praying for a lost daughter. Have faith in God. I'm looking for a woman. I can't see her. In the audience. But she's here somewhere. She's praying. God help me to find her. Somebody with faith. Got heart trouble and diabetes. Her name is Mrs. Wells. Have faith in God. Somewhere I can't. All right. All right, sister. Your faith has saved you. Besides that, heart trouble runs in your family. You don't have a prayer card, do you? Because you know, because all prayer cards are up. Heart trouble runs in your family. You got a brother's got heart trouble. That brother's not here. That brother lives in Baltimore, Maryland, and he's also unsaved because he's shadow with a dark shadow. That's thus saith the Lord. Do you believe with all your heart? Is that sixth sense going to work on you? Put your hands over on one another right here. 
O oh God, creator of heavens and earth, send thy Holy Spirit at this time and heal every person in divine presence through Jesus Christ's name. You believe it? How many in here that wants to know Jesus as your Savior? Stand up on your feet. You're close to Him. God bless you. God bless you. That's right. Wonderful. How many wants the Holy Ghost? Stand on your feet. Wants the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Stand on your feet. Every one of you. It's too many out here to get you now. Fire right off in this room so we can meet you over here. In Jesus' name, if you'll come with sincerity, you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost, saved of all your sins. Go into the room tonight. This is the time. Move over this way to the room. All that's here that believes in God wants to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, move right out of this room so we can minister to you. If there's anybody here from my church down at Jeffersonville that hasn't received the Holy Ghost as yet, Brother Collins and all of them has got the Holy Ghost since they've been here. Oh, they've tore up the country. Come around. This is the time for you to receive it right now. Go in. Don't you come out of there till you got the Holy Ghost. Come now. All sinners, go in here and seek God for salvation. That's the way. I challenge every man and every woman that's in divine presence that's sick. Anything wrong with you? I challenge you to believe the Lord Jesus Christ while I pray for you. Will you do it? How many will promise they'll do it? If God can give me power here to discern spirits, I'm telling you I can't heal you. You're already healed. Jesus healed you when he died for you. Let that sixth sense don't become numb. Put it to work now and believe it. What about all you people here in these wheelchairs? Do you believe it? Then let us raise our hands to God. Oh, Lord God... Let not this message pass in vain. Let not the power of God go to waste here tonight. But may God of heaven send down power of conviction and heal every person. May the devil leave everybody with cancer, heart trouble, cripple, leukemia, any kind of disease. I challenge it by a gift ministered by an angel sent in the sufferings of Jesus Christ to heal the sick and the afflicted. Come out of them, Satan. I charge thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of them. Now, all that accepts Christ as their healer, I don't care what's wrong with you. It doesn't make one bit of difference. If you believe God, raise up and accept it in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the way. Amen. God bless you. That's it. That's perfect. Perfect. God bless you, Lord, Sullivan. Thank you.